Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Weekly Infrastructure Team Meeting. Today we are the 2nd of April 2024. Around the virtual table we are six persons. We have myself, Damien Duportal, we have Mark Waite, Stefan Merle, Bruno Verharten, Kevin Martins, and Hervé Lemur. Welcome everyone. Uh, get started. Uh, last uh, week, we canceled the meeting due to an update center outage, multiple outages. Uh, we will get on these outages uh, later with the issue replace BlobXFair by AZ copy. Uh, so here we are. We have two weeks of work uh, from the past milestone. Everything has been updated. Um, for next announcement. So last week, the weekly release 2.451 has been released in time, except that the packaging part, once finished, had to be uh, um, cancelled and the last steps were run manually. And then due to the update center outages, which was the cause of failure or blocker, we had to wait around two hours before everything went back to normal and was available on all mirrors. Sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, but that release was uh, released in time, and Stefan, or us, I don't remember, uh, was able to update Infra CI, and it was visible for everyone. Is there something about questions, comments, things I could have forgotten about last week release? Nope. Okay. So about today's release, everything uh, worked, release and package at the first time. However, we had issues with the Docker image. Windows images were at the first try, but the Linux port are still having issues with the uh, Docker Hub. So I've sent uh, to Docker a second email because we never had any answer on the first one uh, to the open source team. Um, I'm a bit worried because I saw that the open source product manager has left Docker two or three weeks ago. And Bridget, our contact, is currently seeking his mark open for work on LinkedIn last time I checked. So I don't know what is happening at Docker. I'm going to try with other channels because we don't get any answer by their email uh, challenge. But we have to, uh, we need a careful uh, hi here. Um, I, I will add an announcement or a point, a specific point for the Docker uh, API rate limits after. Back to the today's release. Uh, now everything is ready for the Docker port. Uh, the change log has been published. Thanks, everyone. So we are ready to roll that new weekly release, uh, Stefan, as soon as you are able to today, tomorrow. Uh, and that's all for this announcement. Is there anything else about the today's weekly release specifically? Nope. Is there something about the topic uh, docker rate limit no so so on the the weekly release the the process worked smoothly smoother than than it's been for a number of weeks in terms of number of disruptions and yeah nothing nothing for me to add on api rate limit okay so the reason why the packaging uh, step is not failing is because the probability of the packaging steps running the sync sh script and uh, in concurrent of the update center both scripts are sometimes running concurrently but now with the changes that has been done with the az copy stuff the sync.sh went from around 15 to 20 minutes once per hour to less than two minutes so the probability of both uh, things running at the same time has decreased. It can still happen though, um, because the update center run every five minutes. So we can have collision. We will need to improve the way it's working and specifically we will need to uh, focus. But at least it's why uh, it worked uh, today. Just to have in mind, uh, things have been improved and are going to improve later uh, even more. About the rate limits. We have HTTP for since March. It impairs our ability so to deliver 
Jenkins images core weekly LTS and security releases and agents. So every Docker images we are delivering to our users. Uh, we have to retry a lot of time with replays specifically fixed on either Windows or Linux. So even if we have increased our amount of images, for instance, uh, we introduced uh, uh, LTS 2022 Windows images on SSH agent recently. Um, we have new GDKs, uh, new CPUs that has been introduced by Bruno uh, S390 X out of preview, etc. So we increase the amount of layers that we are pushing during any of our images publication. However, we should not have any a rate limit at all. Not sure why. We also had a change one month and a half ago where trusted CI in charge of that publication had the network changes when it was migrated to the new Azure sponsorship. And we only have one outbound public IP because we use a NAT gateway to avoid unnecessary per, uh, network problems. There might be secondary rate limit on Docker Hub that are unknown or not undocumented. And so as such, the rate limit which is happening today is clearly related to the outbound IP. Trusted.ci only has one outbound IP. So why I'm mentioning that outbound IP? Because we might have a, a quick hack to do right now that will be adding um, multiple outbound IP to specifically trusted CI gateway. So we will spread the requests. Maybe that will uh, push the thresholds when we hit the rate limit. That should be quite easy to do, just a few bucks per month, but that could allow us to not having this issue in short term in autonomy. However, uh, we need an issue. The problem is not ephemeral. Ephemeral and second email to Docker OSS program waiting for an answer. We need a feedback from Docker. I propose that we don't start planning solutions for now and we wait until next week. If next week we don't have any answer from Docker, we will have to start brainstorming on the um, alternative we could have if the multiple IP solution doesn't work. Is there any question, things to add? Of no discussion points on the Docker rate limit. Um, one last announcement. Jenkins Infra is not. I sorry, Damien. Yep. I take it back. I do have a question. Yes. I assume that if if we had to fall back to to providing container images through additional providers we could it's just a bunch more work i know that bruno's been providing container images to google to github if i remember correctly and and so there are ways uh, there are other container hosting services not just docker it's just all of our users are certainly using docker today yes or docker, uh, using hub.docker.com yeah. today that, that's the part i don't want to to discuss this week i just right. want to postpone the discussion because that can implies a lot of changes for end users um, it, it, for us it's easy to do it's not a lot of efforts but for end users that might be a lot of efforts so that's why i will want to get this one just as a last resort. And last week we will have a, a platform SIG meeting after our the infra meeting. So if we need to start the discussion, I propose that we uh, we bring that topic if need be to the SIG platform meeting, SIG. Is that okay for everyone? Any other questions or pointer? No other questions from me, thanks. Uh, one last announcement. We are not affected on the Jenkins infrastructure by the recent CV exit uh, that happened last weekend. Yeah, 
it's a good thing to stick to LTS version so you are up to date, but not too much. And living on the edge, at least for Linux distribution, may have yeah consequences such as being affected. However, we have checked all of our images. Uh, we are all using exit uh, 5.2, uh, which is a version released before the infamous Chia Tang started to commit on the project. So hopefully we are not affected. Uh, on the Jenkins, you, um, let's say Docker images, we have one image affected, but not exploitable. That's the Arc Linux GDK 11 Docker agent image. It doesn't have SSH neither uh, systemd. As a matter of safety, we have released a new version earlier today, uh, just to be sure. And Other than, yep. Go sorry. ahead, Mark. Sorry. So it's a, an intentional choice that that's only Java 11, and that container image will be dead beginning October of 2024 when we drop support for Java 11. Yep. So Arch, Arch Linux is not a long-term platform for the Jenkins project. Absolutely. Any oh, other and, questions? On that? I had to, I had to yep. destroy four virtual machines where I run Debian okay. testing and Debian unstable uh, that I use it for testing for the Git plugin. But it's easy to destroy and recreate, and I did. And just for information, if you want to check if you are affected or if you have a do not run exit dash dash version at all. If you do it, it installs a Trojan horse if you have an affected version in your machine. Yes. Yes, that's one of the commit from Jiatang. So the recommended way is to locate where is your exit binary installed uh, with a command dash v exit or which exit. And then you run the bash internal strings command on that file and you grep on the version. Or you look at the packages engine, such as dpkg-l, pipe grep, exit, or pacman-q, grep, exit, etc. Yeah. Don't yeah. even run LDD if I understood correctly. Absolutely don't. <laughs> that also opens a lot of other backdoor, yeah. Uh, honestly, the upcoming weeks will be fun. Because now people are looking at what that user, which is clearly not a user, but a group of persons with bad intents, what did they do on different and numerous open source projects during the past four years? And for sure, we will have surprises in the upcoming weeks. So everyone be careful, communicate only privately if you see new things before the other. Don't use the Jenkins infra channel. Please use the private security channels if you need some something or if you detect something on the infra. And we will keep the virtual machine and packages up to date a bit more regularly than usual. Yeah, I am curious where you learned. Many of the sites are still saying, check your version with XZ minus minus version. So, so good to know not to do that. Thank you. It's uh, th there is a mention on the uh, initial open wall uh, article where the Microsoft engineer who discovered the uh, the problem uh, said, "Oh, I see. Don't run LDD and don't run uh, dash dash version on the initial post." And yeah, more and more posts are telling people not to do it. Yeah, that that's a tricky one. Something else on XZ. Other announcements? Nope, okay. Okay, it's 20 minutes, yeah. I'm trying to accelerate. Upcoming calendar, we have a weekly next week, 9 April, that will be 2.453. Uh, Tomorrow we have LTS release candidates. And in two weeks, seven, uh, 17 April, 2024, we will have the next LTS, a Wednesday. We also tomorrow have LTS baseline selection. Oh. Next LTS, next baseline selection, thank Mark. Tomorrow. Right. And as far as I can tell, 2.452 looks very good because the preceding eight or 10 Weekly releases showed no issues, and therefore choosing the most recent is looks safe. 
Nice. Um, do we have an own security? The really answer is no. So, down. is there upcoming event where we will have Jenkins contributors or Jenkins Infra contributors? Yes, yeah, CDCon is April 16, 17, and 18 in Seattle, Washington. And Basil Crow and I will be attending. Basil Crow, nice. Sorry, it's CD con like this. Okay. Uh, other events? Question about the calendar? Nope, okay. Uh, just a quick summary on the cloud budgets because we are beginning of the month. I've had, so uh, first Azure, we have clearly decreased the Azure uh, uh, consumption in January and we are around 4.2K per month. That's the current consumption, more or less a few bucks. So let's keep that uh, consumption uh, uh, steady. Uh, we have, uh, so the work of uh, Hervé on the storage accounts allowed us to gain around 200K, but we consume 200K more on other areas. So it's a neutral operation, uh, but we can keep that at, uh, on a steady thing, which mean um, as per the projection, if we keep that consumption rate, we should be able to meet, to go back on the expected average provided by the CDF in September, which means the free, the last trimester of this year should be only bonus. So uh, if we keep with the same uh, consumption, we should be below what the CDF expect from us for this year. It's a bit early to tell them, but right now we are keeping this steady. Is there any question on on this one? No, congratulations. Thank you. Thanks to everyone for keeping us in budget. It makes things much easier in discussions with CDF. Clearly. Thanks everyone for the effort here. Um, about the Azure sponsorship, so the new account we've set up last year, uh, we have currently 32K credits left. We have consumed almost 7.5. We have an almost steady rate, steady rate of 2K per month. We could increase that consumption on some elements, but we haven't looked at this yet. I believe that one is good enough for now. Yeah, we that can lower it too with the spot instances if they allow us to. Yes, but right now it's free credit for us. So I propose that we don't focus too much on this one. Uh, we keep a steady consumption for now and we'll see later. We can increase the usage because these are uh, virtual credits, so spots are not stop, but no problem. And also, we have limits on the credits. There is a uh, discrete only available until a certain threshold. So we might have to check in, at, in two or three months if we don't need to increase suddenly or ask Microsoft to, to uh, make this credit expire one year later. Thank you. So you just answered my question. Do they have an expiration date? And the answer is yes. And we will double check that we're burning on the expiration date, that we, we won't leave money on the table, money unused, but we'll do that next next time we meet. Great. Thank you. Is that okay for you, Stefan, related to the spot instance? I'm sure Stefan will be able to consume way more credit soon with RM64. Oh, yeah, with pleasure. No worries. Um, on cloud-based parts, so in February, we were able to decrease the, the usage, mostly due to less bomb builds. But uh, March has uh, had a lot of bomb activity. So of course, we saw an increase here. We've seen a few, uh, a few bomb optimization that could happen. But the goal here is to decrease or and eventually suppress that consumption in the upcoming trimester with two main elements. 
the migration of the update center to using Azure and Mirror Bits and Cloudflare, uh, the work that Hervé is uh, uh, leading. And also, we have a new AWS sponsored account uh, that we should start to use, specifically creating a new cluster for CI Jenkins IO, moving the BOM workloads out from CloudBees into the new sponsored AWS account. Uh, right. We need to connect. There is an issue about this. I'm a bit late on that topic. So that should be the priority for the upcoming two weeks on my side. Uh, word on Digital Ocean, we still have 17,000 uh, credit left as for today. Uh, the rate uh, has increased in March because with the ACP work and the amount of builds we were able and the Kubernetes upgrade, we started to use the Kubernetes cluster on DigitalOcean again. So clearly compared to February, we consume 300 credits more, which is good because we are consuming credits at, uh, and without bad surprise. I didn't add it the other uh, uh, cloud budgets such as Fastly or those because they are sponsored. If you want, I can for the next time. Don't hesitate to send me a message about this. So we're well under the the donation that DigitalOcean provides of twenty thousand for the year, right? At at less than a thousand a month, we're doing just fine. We could actually consume more on DigitalOcean, to to if if that made sense. Great, absolutely. Thanks. That could be an alternative for uh, update center mirrors or other solution if we need to move things away or if we reach the end of the AWS credits that we need to migrate somewhere else. These credits do not expire, so that's a good thing. Any question on the cloud budget? Okay. Um, we've done a lot of thing. I will try to get over it as quickly as possible. Um, first, I, I'm taking a demo on the order on the screen. Uh, Cloudflare API tokens are expired, so we renew the token and now everything is back to normal. Uh, that had an impact during the past 24 hours on the update center and crawler job. They were marked as failure, but they were still doing their um, their job. It's just the last step that was copying that this data to Cloudflare that failed. So hopefully no plugin updates were late. Uh, that will be a problem once we will have migrated update center to the new system, but not there yet. Uh, I think that's all. Uh, we have improved the uh, calendar notification here. So next time we will know prior to the day when it's expiring. I think we are doomed to do the same mistake again and again, and everyone is concerned here. Each time we create a new calendar event, we have our deep our deep dive on what we are doing right now. And most of the time we should think about adding free two and one week notification. Uh, so that's all. There has been a, a spam bot command deleted. Thanks for whomever did this. Uh, there's been a new plugin. Um, <clears throat> GUnit plugin fails to download and causes Jenkins setup without to fail. So that one was a consequence of last week outage uh, that has been fixed. So thanks for uh, anyone who uh, reported that. Uh, we will cover during the Blobix file as it copy the, the outage itself. Latest commit for contributor spotlight not building properly. So we had a, I don't, I think we had a, an expired credential as usual. Let me just check. No, okay, no, it was a network restriction. And since we migrated contributor spotlight agents from one kind of agent to another, that changed the network. So these new agents weren't allowed to update the file storage. So we added uh, the files, the, we removed the limitation for that specific side there and network and that's that was fixed. Uh, an expected content in get Jenkins IO plugin, same uh, update center outage that has been fixed. There was a Git repository to recover taken over by the Jenkins CI GitHub organization uh, administrator. 
Same on archiving Jenkins CI DOM for G. Uh, another spammer, so thanks again for cleaning it up. Last week, we had an LTS 2.442 that was uh, successful and successfully applied to the platform less than 24 hours after. Third spam bot, okay, that's a lot of spam bot. Uh, we had an almost expired service principle and we were able to rotate it. That one was used by InfraCI uh, to create new agent on Azure that was taken uh, soon enough and changed with success. So good job team. We start to have a good rotation procedure. Uh, Jira specific operation. Thanks Mark for helping me on this one. Uh, permission for Jenkins security scan repositories. We, are, we had people from the GenSec team uh, needing to access this. So we were able to create, to add them to the GenkinSec team in Jenkins Infra. And now they have the uh, expected permission on the repo. So no more action here. Um, unexpected delays building small plugin on Linux agent. So that one has been closed because since the new ACP 1.0, I will uh, also describe this later on the work in progress. But we discover, we saw that in fact, the delays were mostly due to digital ocean agent running in Europe. And the Maven central repository is on the US East Coast. And the delays and slowness are because we had to re-download a lot of artifact through that link that create, yes, eight to 12 times slower and we can reproduce it poor souls us in Europe if we don't have a Maven central cache. It's clearly slower than for our American colleagues and there is no geo replication of that one. So if you are in Europe on Asia, you should have a Maven cache running on now that will clearly improve your Maven builds. So that has been fixed thanks to that and the a recent Kubernetes upgrade that helped ACP to run faster. So thanks everyone, because everyone uh, was successfully uh, key on that one. And we are back to results we had before the wall Maven Central being moved outside the uh, artifactory. We know how to revoke OpenVPN all certs. Uh, that wasn't an automated part, but now we know to do it manually. And we revoke and test it for uh, Alex. And we also tested accidentally on one of uh, Hervey Hall certificates, which prove it work for revocation. So now we have a, a documented uh, way to doing it. We could automate, but that's not worth the effort. Just need to read the doc and update the text file. And finally, as part of uh, last week, update center outage, we did a lot of changes on Puppet for the PKG machine. And that allowed us to finish the cleanup of Mirror Brain by adding back uh, Mirror Brain user and some of its resources and cleaning up and securing the machine even more and removing all things from the past. One of the main changes on this one is that now the user WW data cannot log in anymore, either through SSH or even with a bash, it's been no login as it should be. So the user that run Apache on that machine is not able to have a shell anymore and is not having access anymore to any SSH key. That could have been quite an issue if the Apache version we run there was having a CVE, for instance. That was a thing from four or five years ago that has been fixed. Every system needing to update the PKG Jenkins IO or update Jenkins IO are using the mirror brain user, which is different user with a different set of permissions now. That has been quite a set of issues. So thanks, Hervé, thanks, Stefan, thanks, Mark, for helping on this one because that has been a bad week last week. We have a bunch of uh, issues that weren't planned, mostly people uh, trying to create account on their own Jenkins instance as usual, or uh, not using the community forum. Okay, quick pause here. Is there any questions or things to add on the test that we were able to finish during the past two weeks? 
Hop. OK. So I'm going to start first with the blob X fair as a copy, uh, then ACP, and then we can continue on priorities. Um, so blob X fair with AZ copy. Hervé, do you want to do a summary? Should I do one? I propose I do a summary of what have been done, and you do a summary of what are the uh, next step before closure. Is that OK for you? OK. So last week, um, last Monday, one day before the weekly and two days before the LTS, we decided to effectively start using AZ copy instead of BlobXFair on the PKG VM in order to synchronize data to get Jenkins IO. Uh, that was a way to untangle a bunch of old scripts and prepare the, let's say, uh, lay the ground for the update Jenkins IO migration. As a consequence, we had a, a non, um, uh, ro we couldn't roll back a change that has been made on the permissions on the files because it started to go over all the PKG Jenkins IO data tree. That, uh, that is a lot. And finding the exact set of permission wasn't possible. We didn't take a snapshot of the file system before that operation, so we weren't able to roll back the chain. So we had to finish that change and go forward. In any case, it would have broken, so we could have rolled back eventually on the first past five minutes, but we would have, have had to break everything again. Uh, so we could imp we have to improve in the future for such changes, but there were so much unplanned issue on this one that we had to fix it. That took two full days until the LTS, but now we have an improved ground. The main issue was the permission mix up between mirror brains and WW data users that were used concurrently, one by trusted CI with the update center and the other by all the releases. It's because that machine has PKG and updates, which are two different services, but the scripts are tangled here. And also that machine has been managed manually during three years before we were able to enable Puppet Agent on it again. So the consequences of everything uh, made what should have been a minor and ephemeral mistake on the AZ copy way of specifying source and directory, you know, Ersync and CP are different already. It's already a nightmare. AZ copy has its own way of specifying recursive thing. And what should have been a minor mistake took way uh, a, a bigger scope, uh, but at least that uncovered a lot of issues that we had to fix. So everyone is back and now the three of us on the SRE team we know every details on different scripts and we remove half of the script and now everything is code managed. So we are back in uh, back in time. And the good the good thing now, the outcome is that the, the hourly sync.sh script that takes care of a full sync between the machine and all the, the OSU SL and archive mirrors is taking less than two minutes thanks to AZ copy. And the writes for the files and folder are now handled by Puppet directly, so everything is smooth and as good. Exactly, no more concurrency, and everything is cleaned up. Uh, the bad outcome that made me so mad that I was uh, ready to buy a plane ticket to Redmond and go there with a baseball bat is that AZ copy breaks the Linux STD in, so you must prefix each call on a, inside a script by column pipe. Otherwise, it breaks all the while loop or every tricks you do with STD in on pipes. Yeah, that was a very tricky one. I have yeah, that's a non POSIX that. thing, and that one didn't help. So, so yeah. it, it opens standard input and then closes it? Oh, that's yes. oh, bizarre. Okay. Which is absolutely non, not POSIX compliant, but now we know that using AZ copy with STD in, yeah, better not. <laughs> So we have a trick on the script, and yeah. And that's so. Uh, Hervé, your turn. What are the next steps before we can close this one? I have uh, an open pull request to remove BlobXFair from Docker image. And I have some uh, remaining uh, SIS token 
maybe Dora Jacqueline to clean up. Okay. Um, so the next step you said removing blob X fair from Docker Builder. Pair in progress. Removing SAS tokens and some storage accounts. Uh, so I got a request for this one. First, we need an exhaustive list on the issue, even if it's not automated or as code. Mm -hmm. And second, we have to announce this uh, so we can plan it carefully. Is that okay for you? Like like you did last week for the initial uh, operation. Is that okay? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, detail in the issue. Is there any other question on this one? Nope, okay. Uh, now I'm moving to artifact caching proxy. Uh, we were able to deliver a new version of ACP um, 1.0 featuring server-side fallback to incrementals and Apache uh, Central. So instead of letting Maven retry on the different fallbacks on client side, we decided to do it on server side. Uh, pro is that it's way faster, way, way, way faster. Uh, inconvenient is that it's a slightly different dependency resolution mechanism than Maven for our contributor outside the infrastructure, or when we do a continuous delivery of plugins or when we release Jenkins. But no one wants to use cache when doing a release of Jenkins of a plugins, otherwise you are bound to a lot of problems quickly. So we decided to say it's only on the CI part, and we accept that given the performance improvement. Is there any question about that part that we deployed last week? Okay, so now I can go on. What issue did it cause? Because it caused some. So let me add the free, we have free issue related to this one. Um, first, uh, we are almost ready to close the initial issue. That was a request from Bezel to add back the Maven central caching on ACP, which we used to have month ago before we did the artifactory uh, project, bandwidth reduction for, ad, for uh, our sponsor. Uh, now we have good performances. Um, there is still a few errors that we cooked that might be ephemeral, uh, 5.0 errors. Uh, I would want to check if we had uh, these errors again, or if it was just uh, during the migration. These errors are related to uh, ACP uh, writing temporarily big files on the system because they are, it's not able to have it fully in memory. So it used the buffer and write buffer lines. But since it's cached directly, Nginx should be writing directly the buffer part to the cache. So that one caused issues. Uh, I'm not sure about the performance issue here. Uh, we don't really care because we just have a second build that take care of it. Uh, but I just want to be sure it's not related to memory usage and we don't have to tune, fine tune more before closing. That should be a one hour analysis in this week. So I'm keeping it open. Uh, anyone interested is welcome to read the documentation I've added on the issue. And, that way, and we can check the uh, these metrics on Datadog quite easy. So it's almost closable, um, closable, almost. Modulo. One last uh, metrics analysis and HTTP 500 errors. Um, then we have a brand new issue, which is not ACP itself. However, that has been uh, shown that has been pointed by a usage of ACP, 
we are caching inside Artifactory, artifact that should be on Maven Central and that were overriding Maven Central since years. We didn't add, we didn't see any issues because Maven Central used to be a mirror and Artifactory was resolving the artifact priority by prioritizing the mirrors and just using our additional. But now, since it's separated, ACP only use what is inside our system. So Mark, uh, I believe that Basil proposal makes sense. We should as soon as possible to unblock, uh, to remove this error and unblock BOM release. We should get any Maven plugin related elements uh, that used to be uh, either mirrored on Maven Central or deployed with a, a specific Jenkins version because it used to be forks years ago. I propose that we move them to a specific repository and remove the all these elements until we reach a, a nice state. So we don't delete them, but move them somewhere. And if we see a project or a plugin having issues, they can add on their POM XML the specific local repository that we called archives or old artifact or old public. Um, so we can act swiftly, remove the errors without putting any project build at risk. What do you think? Uh Sounds that sounds very reasonable to me. Thank you. We have remnants of old Apache Maven plugins in Clash Public that should be moved to a specific custom repo, mostly folks. We might have other surprises after this one, but at least that's the way forward. And um, Uli Hafner um, was uh, um, open uh, an issue a few weeks ago about ACP not proxying the incremental artifact. The new ACP features that caching, but Uli is blocked with the previous issue, so he cannot confirm it's solved for him. So now we have this one on hold. On hold, blocked by the issue above. That's all for ACP. Is there any other question need for clarification? I try to be as brief as possible. Nope. Okay. Um, I'm going to wait for every for the update center uh, updates. Stefan and I and, uh, and Damien must read and update the GEP. We have a few topics that uh, we need review because uh, we never took the time to read it carefully. And we need to add some, let's say, extensive uh, fallback solutions, such as, hey, do we open on production with only Cloudflare Mirror located in Europe? Do we need, uh, we most probably need at least a US Mirror and uh, European Mirrors. What are the solutions? Uh, do we, uh, we need to describe the solutions such as, I don't know, using digital ocean for our mirrors or for a fallback and a few elements. Um, Hervé uh, works on the performance benchmark. So he will uh, add notes on this issue. We had team discussion about our synchronization on that topic. Ah, oh, Hervé, you're back. So I let you report on the benchmark part then. Um, yes, I have to describe uh, what I plan to do and which tool I will use. Um, it will probably be Vegeta or G6. Um, an interesting point here that I've asked Hervé to report when he will do that is since he ran a few tests last week already, um uh measuring the costs uh you told it was using 20 virtual machines right yeah um, i haven't uh, uh managed to drill exactly the cost but from what okay. i uh, it should be less than 10 dollars i think mm -hmm. i don't see other uh, resource group in the um, I can't drill. I can't drill to the exact uh, process group, so I, I haven't managed to identify the concrete cost of my day. Uh, 
Okay, don't hesitate to add screenshots of what uh, you see in the issue. Please document it so we can uh, we can run it or we can have a different view. Uh, that's the important part. We must not do it alone. Uh, we must document as much as possible. That's mandatory. Okay. I haven't had the time since, the, since today yet. No problem. It's just a, a note for everyone because I did a mistake numerous times. You did the mistake last week. So that's a team improvement that we need. Uh, and so uh, what we discover is that we can break the ingress of public uh, gates and make some services slower by running a performance benchmark. And so that was the, uh, let's say, we need some improvements uh, on first. Uh, a few side effect from initial benchmark. Uh, we can improve the AKS cluster quality, quality for public. Uh, there, there were some uh, as the Azure detected and uh, recommended is and is recommending improvements, adding a, a third system pool node. Uh, we saw the quality of the control plane can be improved uh, because it has been uh, really, really chicken. Uh, we can also check the metrics of the ingress and the impact because the ingress is shared by all the web services we serve, not only this one. So maybe we will need to add uh, more nodes and more uh, replicas to the ingress. We need to, to see what are the limits of that ingress. Um, uh, ingress, control plane, sys pool nodes. We have recommendations and metrics. We need to start collecting the logs of the ingress, the access logs, because we are doing it for the backend services, but we discover it's not the case for the ingress Nginx, or maybe it's somewhere else in Datadog, but that's really done. And we need a way to quickly access it, specifically when we need to see the source IP of the emitted request. And finally, we need to fix the Datadog metrics collection for mirror bits, mirror bits and HTTPD both get Jenkins.io and new updates Jenkins.io have no metrics shown. We the, it, it, it see the namespace, but it doesn't see the pod, so we don't have metrics. Is it a change in Datadog configuration, a bug, something? We don't know, but we need this. Otherwise, the performance benchmark won't make sense because we cannot see the impact on mirror bits and HTTPD of these benchmarks. So it just say it breaks at that amount of request, but that's all. That doesn't allow us to tune, to fix. So we must do it before running other benchmarks. Is there any question, clarification, points I could have forgotten on this topic? Nope, okay. Um, so quickly on the priorities, we have AWS, so I'm late on that topic. Um, I need to bootstrap the account, check that we have the 60K credits and start uh, making plans. So still to do, nothing else to add, but that's top priority because the goal is to get away uh, and to get to start using as soon as possible the credits here. Stefan, can you give us a summary on the IRM64 part, please? Yeah, I found uh, one job in the one pipeline, sorry, on the infra CI. I, I, I prepared a pull request, but um, uh, I just need the uh, approval and then I will be able to merge and follow the checklist to make sure that it's building correctly. Um, I'm sorry, I tried to remember the name of the repository, I forgot. No problem. It's plugin backend API. Hervé, I, I yeah. didn't saw your message. You are you can drop if you need to for your son. Uh, thanks for the updates. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, we had everything we needed. I mean, he went straight from. Okay, cool. Um, so RM sixty four. That was uh, Pierre. 
whip on plugin site API. So once change, we will have to check that uh, it will generate a new version successfully and deploy it. You added everything that looks next... good. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, go away. Yeah. I think the next step would be to try for the for the controller to be on IAM now. So uh, providing new um, uh, node pool, not to have the same node pool from the controller and the and the agent and, and try. Uh, yes. I cooked mm. at least Maybe one you thing you it. need to run. Oops. Remove Docker Ashicorp. Oh yeah, I, I have I have remnants of oh. that one. Job on infra CI and check and check others to clean up if need be. I, I'm sure for Docker Ashikop because I saw it. Yeah, the other today. ones I can't because I use not on, on, on other uh, controllers. There is there is agent using the 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 other image do, uh, yep. builder, Docker builder, um on on trusted and, and CI and I forgot. And trusted one. that's not possible. Oh, okay. No, that's not possible. I challenge you to find it. No, I think it's Update Center, which is using Node, which is using nope. the same name. Nope, okay. I challenge you. <laughs> if you challenge me, you're probably right. So I will not play that game with you. But, but... that means that mean you need to do a one last sweep of a sweep of every images that could be IRMized. Uh, I think none. I will have to check. Again. Uh, the, the main issue, um, because I still need, uh, I still see Docker Builder. That one need to die. It cannot die because it's used on on, it, on CI. That means in CI we need to move away from Docker oh, Builder to okay, Docker Builder. Okay, so oh, so that, next step will be, be on CI, but that's yeah. not on on infra. Okay. Uh, uh, you're right. That's, not the same uh, issue. No, no, you are absolutely right. That's a different topic. Sorry, I I lost focus. Um, let me remove. So, yep, almost there. Then your next step looks good. Thank you. Uh, the other issues uh, we have had a new one from James about the directory header in updates download plugins. So, that one is joining the long list of elements that say, hey, next we should generate back the index HTML when we release a new plugin or a new core version and update this directly on the mirrors. So I propose to add this to the backlog, uh, or at least remove it from the milestone because there is no action item for us right now. Backlog, it's not really important. Uh, new issue opened by Stefan. Uh, we have coupling between plugin site API and CI Jenkins IO. So we need to remove that coupling. Otherwise, the plugin site cannot be generated when CI Jenkins IO is down. There is also incoming one on incremental publisher that I cooked recently. I forgot to open the issue. Uh, I will want to start this one and to involve uh, Stefan or Hervé at a given moment. I will let you know, but I will spend time on hand of week. That's a low priority. Mark, I need your help on this on the test Jira test projects. Looks like. We that should one, I either... think we should yep. just close it. It's I think we've got conclusion in the discussion. I'll happily get involved in it further, Damien. Yep. I think that the answer is we just ask Alex to confirm that he's okay, that we will not uh, take any further steps on that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I will very much want you if it's okay for you uh, in terms of timing. Got it. Yes, workload. you can assign it to me if it's uh, in fact I'll assign it to me. Cool, thanks. Uh, Hervé, while you're there, so can you give us an update on the two, two new mirrors? Um, I have to ping uh, RCS, RDS, and I have to earn uh, Sebastian from Mostico send us a mail with all we need, apparently, for putting in uh, their new mirror in our system. Okay. I will have I will have to test it locally before to check if the FTP with a user and password is working as expected. 
Sen uh, I don't I don't set the new mirror is available. So we should be able to have almost one or two new mirrors. Um, should I keep these two issues on the milestone or do you want to move them and add them only if you have feedbacks? Uh, keep them. I have so I okay. I know that I have to ping them. Uh, we have um, a really a pretty sp um, a specific uh, request from Jesse about the pipeline library for incremental deployment. I propose to postpone this one uh, or to ask someone else. But right now, I the the, the balance uh, advantage. Uh, versus effort here uh, doesn't allow us to do it properly, if that's okay for everyone. My cloud postponing two, three weeks due to workload. Um, Delphix plugin bundles proprietary dependency. I thought this one was closable. That's still a, that's still a board action item. We've got, okay. it has... We have successfully really or the the maintainers have successfully released the new version, but we need to remove the non-compliant versions from distributions, and that means also doing artifactory work to delete them from from the uh, from the artifact repository, and, and the work still needs to be done. Is uh, license issues are driven by the board? Okay, thanks for the update, Mark. Uh, we have the IPv6 thing uh, needs to work on let's encrypt renewal using EC DSA. That's uh, low priority, uh, but we have some uh, certificate to renew in the upcoming three days. I will take care of that tomorrow because at least Mirrors Jenkins IO and Mirrors Jenkins AI.org domain will have their certificate expiring. They should not. I don't know why, so we need to quickly check uh, this, but we received an alert uh, two or three days ago on these two specifically. So yeah, we'll, the, uh, we'll do an all-in-one action tomorrow morning. Could you, was... could you call out those those hosts again, Damien? Which were they? Mirrors.jenkins.io and mirrorsjenkinsci.org. These used to be the former DNS names. Uh, that were running with Mirror Brain on PKG, but migrated one year ago to be aliases of Get Jenkins IO. Uh, right. so, Thank you. Yeah. So I just I just double checked. My monitoring is not checking their um, their uh, SSL certificate uh, expiration, and it should be. So thanks. Expiration for get Jenkins .io. So I need to open an issue for this. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, mirrors.jenkins.io. The certificate doesn't expire, expire at least from my web browser until June twenty four. It was just issued March twenty six. Oh, so I need to double check the let's encrypt messages I got. Maybe yeah. they are. Yep. So, so uh, uh, it, it may be that I'm checking the wrong site, but mirrors.jenkins.io is it has a, a nice long-lived certificate march 26 is not long ago right that was only five or six days ago so right? maybe the so... the mail yeah maybe the mail was prior to this and they received them later yeah i need to need to check but good news that means uh, less emergency yeah although it also means that my monitoring needs to be extended so or, or we could uh, extend the Datadog monitoring. Which we will do both, certainly. We, we will do Datadog whether or not I extend mine. Absolutely. Yes. No question. Um, we think with Adrien on that part, everything good. Damien need to report on the issue. I'm late on this one. The issue. Uh, next steps, create CI jobs on ci.g and cd job on infra ci so as coked and proposed by rv um, it looks like the plugin ill score is highly coupled with plugin site api generation so the idea is to uh, untight that coupling by having a new job that generate the reports 
of the plugin health score instead of serving an API on a, a non-highly available system. And this report will be posted on Report Jenkins IO, which is a simple, highly available web server with public reports. And then Plugin Site will start using these reports. So if Plugin Hill score is down for whatever reason, we still have the latest export and Plugin Site API is not broken. That's a really nice uh, impro uh, improvement. Adrian already did the EV work for generating the report. And now the, uh, we have to provide him the tools, a CI job on CI Jenkins IO to check and like we do with all reports. And we need then to create one job on Infra CI with the real deployment chain that will take care of putting the real life and safe report on the proper location. Meaning for, for plugging and scoring two jobs on CI and two jobs on Infra, but not doing the same thing. There's Not already one job. Uh, yes, but that one build the plugin else score yeah, application. Yeah, I know. They're not doing the same thing. Which is different. But... Yeah, absolutely. So that's a but... second job. Is that what you meant? Yes. Okay. Uh, we, but need the, to, the... we need to to get in our mind that this plugin else scoring will have two on each controller. Yep. Not absolutely. doing the same thing, but two. Absolutely. Uh, that's important for the name. And finally, we have Docs Jenkins IO. Hervé, it's on all the rights. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Um, on hold. So I'm moving this outside of the milestone. And if you find time to work on it, don't hesitate to put it back to the milestone. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry that was a quite long meeting today. Um, we just have a few new incoming items that we need to try each uh, to see if we need to work on them or prioritize. Mark was a bit too fast. <laughs> so Jenkins security scan fail due to uh, artifactory, Jenkins stat repository, uh, and that one is uh, Stefan, so I can remove the try So only two new incoming items. Uh, the first one has been open, so it looks like Artifactory uh, had issues. Uh, I mean, yeah, they are right. Connection reset clearly shows there is a network issue. It's hard to tell at first sight if it's on the GitHub action worker that has been used for this task, or if it's Artifactory cutting connections. It's unrelated to ACP, first thing, because here it's directly from GitHub workflow actions directly to Artifactory. There is no ACP involved. Uh, I don't see any actionable for us on the infrastructure. Maybe checking the status on GFrog. Uh, let's see. So uh, unless someone wants to get in contact with Jones, I will answer them and check this. But I don't see any actionable for us right now. Eventually, uh, if it happens again, contacting GFrog. So I will add it to the new milestone. Any question? And the other one, it's a co-issue uh, from Bruno and Jean-Marc uh, about hosting the different tools that Jean-Marc Mason created for collecting the contributor stats for the community. Um, there is different and multiple repositories. So I've asked them to really draft the needs because we have some containing data. So that thing could move to report Jenkins IO instead of a repository, or we could have the repository with the history of the data. I don't know, but that one is okay. One is containing the, the main process that takes care of getting data, transforming it and write, writing it. Um, it looks like there is there are two other repositories that could be interesting. I'm mentioning them for the infra. First one contain the code, the source code for a command line tools. I believe it's Golang or Shell, I'm not sure. And the second one is an Ombro TAP, which is a kind of uh, a package repository for the tool name Ombro, mainly used on macOS, but it works on Linux and Windows as well. And that's a way to deliver command lines. Um, we had that discussion with Garrett Evans a few years ago 
because we used to have, and we still have a few command line authored by the World Jenkins project, such as Jenkins version. We used to have UC. I believe there might be interest on the Jenkins security repository with the GraphQL thing. So my proposal, if everyone is okay, is that we could have a Jenkins Infra homebrew tap that would be a kind of custom repository. It's not tools directly for Jenkins user. That's why it stay on the Jenkins Infra repository. It's a set of tools for the common lines and tool and eventually scripts to deliver using homebrew. And that will involve, of course, John Mark Mason code since he's willing to uh, relinquish the source code to us. That's the proposal. Um, I don't think we will be able to work on this on the next milestone. If that's okay for everyone, I propose to postpone in two weeks. Time for us to uh, get back on our feet. Yeah, and would you have a memory tap repository in Shankin Safa? Yes, that's a good news. Was it a question or, or, or no? No, it's an affirmation. Yes, there is cool. already a Jenkins version and UC in it. That's perfect. That means we only have to add the formula here. Oh yeah, Garrett already did the heavy lifting. So we just we only need to update the GitHub tokens to avoid having Garrett G events authoring these tabs. But yeah, that's good news. I'm gonna comment on the issue then. Thanks, Avery. I forgot about that. It was already done. We might want to add, uh, yeah, it will be used for later, but add the uh, deeply manifest to update version in it since Garrett is currently manually updating it by pushing on master directly. Mm -hmm. Good point. So that opened a lot of, uh, of things. I'm sure Bruno will uh, have a lot of updates CLI manifest to write if we ask him nicely. <laughs> it's, a bo it's a bone to hit. Is that the, the wording in English? Is the king of the CLI and, and um, uh, GitHub action. Cool. I don't have other topics. Do you have some, folks? See si Java 22. Maybe too soon. Uh, that's worth asking it uh, right now. Um, yes. Present us uh, your idea, uh, Hervé. Uh, so, Alex. On this, uh, uh, wrote, uh, created a new thread on HDK22, saying that uh, the few blockers uh, uh, disappeared, so we can use uh, HDK22 for Jenkins. Uh, we could add uh, this version in our controller and agents, in our agents. And uh, but for that we have to to set uh, a life cycle for GDK versions. Like uh, this one will be available until its end of life uh, in five months. Is there any advice point of view? I agree with Hervé, that's a discussion we had team-wide earlier today, but that we also have all of us on one of the weekly meeting. The initial proposal to have a GDK-H, for instance, is complicated because it had an element of surprise for developer. But since we have a fixed end of life in five months and a few days for GDK-22, uh, that makes sense to say our end of life policy is that we add it as GDK22. If you want to use it, you can, but you have to know that it will end on, I think it's somehow September 2024. Okay. Um, Hervé, are you willing to open an issue for this one to summarize that? Yes. Thanks. But we clearly explain the AOL should to be created by thanks anything else nope to be migrated postpone two weeks 
reuse existing, sorry, I'm taking the end of the note. Top of Jenkins Infra. Okay, I don't have anything else on my side, so that's the end of the meeting then. I will uh, finish update milestone on issues. Thanks for being patient uh, with that long meeting. We'll see each other with, I expect, a, a faster meeting. And bye-bye for everyone and see you next week uh, for everyone watching us.